welcome to the webinar today. I am Parth Desai, Director of Solutions and Industrial, and I am here to introduce you to Litmus API portal that we view as a complete game changer in how you integrate Litmus Edge and Litmus Edge Manager functionalities into your applications. I am joined by Parth Shah from my team who will showcase three sample applications developed to highlight how you can leverage the Litmus Edge and Litmus Edge Manager APIs to build data-driven industrial applications. In this session, we will cover why we put together the Litmus API portal, how to access the portal, scope of the portal, sample application, frequently asked questions. Over the years, we have collaborated closely with valued customers and partners, including system integrators, to leverage Litmus Edge APIs for innovative custom applications. As we have continuously added features and functionalities, we recognize the need for a scalable solution that empowers everyone in the industrial data ecosystem. This is where the exciting Litmus API portal comes in. We are thrilled to introduce this developer-centric platform designed to supercharge industrial data application development for both our customers and partners. One such example is the leading food and beverage German manufacturing company who used these APIs to supercharge the digital transformation journey. The Litmus API portal goes beyond standard user interfaces. It empowers you to automate workflows, say goodbye to repetitive tasks, automate data processing pipelines and streamline your development process, design custom UIs, create user experiences that perfectly align with your specific needs and workflows. Develop personalized applications, tailor applications to address unique industry challenges or cater to individual user preferences. This is especially exciting for our existing Litmus customers with a focus on scaling and growing their industrial data operations. The Litmus API portal allows you to develop applications faster and more effectively. Enhance the functionality and user experience of your data solutions adapt your applications to the specific needs of your industrial vertical. With this, let me pass it on to Parth Shah, who will showcase three sample applications built using the APIs in the portal. Uh, thank you, Parth. And uh, as a data scientist at Litmus, I would like to showcase a few things and the capabilities of Litmus API portal. So first, we can just go through uh, how the portal works, how you're supposed to use it in Postman, just very briefly. And then we can look at uh, three practical applications and we can view this in uh, three uh, separate segments where one of the application is just how you would use your litmus api portal conceptually to design your application one sample will be uh, let's say you have a workflow already going on um, and uh, you want to integrate um, litmus edge into it and how we would use APIs for that. So a GitOps kind of a example. And for the other example, uh, what we can do is just show uh, at a brief level, like how you would use your API portal APIs to formulate a Python script. It doesn't have to be too um, detailed, but these are like three different examples and three different circumstances and three different ways of how you would use your API portal like building conceptually, using the code, and using it in your existing workflow. A brief overview on the Litmus API portal uh, layout. So as you can see on the left side, we have uh, Litmus Edge uh, and Litmus Edge Manager API documentation. And we will be publishing different versions of Litmus Edge and Litmus Edge Manager depending on which version is stable and which one, version is a new one. Another thing you would see over here is this environment. And this will come into play when you are actually downloading the API portal collection in your Postman. Um, what this will do is let's say you have placeholders in this portal, which is something like a device ID, or for some APIs, you will have, for most APIs, you will have like um, edge IP address or edge manager IP address. So what this environment will allow you to do you just have to edit that one variable in the environment and it will automatically update that variable everywhere in your collection. So that's the huge benefit of having everything behind the environment variables. 
Another thing that you will notice over here is the language. Uh, currently, we are on C URL or curl. Um, and this represents how the example request will show up as. So you will see a curl command right here. That That's the choice of my language right now. But I can also change it to, let's say, something like Python requests. And now this whole API portal will show me requests only which are like Python request format. So if I just refresh the page, oh, there you go. So you will see example request only in terms of Python request format instead of the curl command. And it will also show you the response and the exact request that you have to make for different APIs. This also works with uh, any other language mentioned over here, which is something like a shell wget or go or node.js or anything like that. So that's the basic uh, layout of the API portal. And another major thing over here you would see is run in Postman. So once you click on that, you'll be able to download this entire collection either to your Postman app or um, web UI of the Postman. That's the main layout of this API portal. Okay, so this is what you would see when you click on uh, run in Postman on the API portal that we showed earlier. That will download your uh, collection and into your Postman app. As you can see on the left side, we have uh, Litmus Edge and Litmus Edge Manager, and everything is divided into folders where each folder represents the component of Edge and Edge Manager respectively. So how you would navigate this is essentially, let's say if I want to uh, look at the device of status that I see on Litmus Edge Manager on the dashboard page, I would click on the dashboard folder and I would get a selection of options. Do I want to see the analytic status? I do not. I want to see the device of status. So I click on that API and it will show me it's just a get command uh, of this uh, API URL, device shop slash version. And there is an environment variable in play, which is the edge URL. So this is the environment variable that we mentioned in the previous video. And then uh, all you would need to do to get essentially almost all APIs working is just edit environment variables. How you would do that is you would click on this I button over here, which shows like environment click, uh, quick look. And I would click on edit over here to make sure everything is according to my environment and not just placeholder values. As you can see, um, currently right now, we have a placeholder such as edge IP address HTTPS but I would actually want to change it to something that represents my litmus edge value, which is something like this. Let's say I click on save, and then this is going to be the current value of my environment. So all I need to do is click on save over here. And if you navigate back to that API earlier, you would currently see that the, uh, the value right now is this and not the placeholder that we uh, gave on the API portal. And essentially you would need to work through each of these environment variables, which are things like API token that you see on Litmus Edge or the, your device ID that you want to work on and so on and so forth. And uh, once you do that, all of these API should just work. Directly. Just as a quick example, I will just uh, enter my demo device uh, details over here. I'm not going to edit all the environment variables. I just want, I just want to give you uh, and quick overview how this will work. So I just edited my edge URL and my API token from the edge. And if I click on uh, this API that I saw earlier, and if I just do send, uh, you will see that Postman is working on it. And essentially, oh, I'm going to get a response. So this works for any API which does not need too many uh, environment variables. Let's just pick uh, analytic status as well while we're at it. And if I click on send, it will grab this edge URL from the environment variable and give me the status 200 for analytics as well. That's just a short overview of how uh, to edit the environment variables and how they will open up almost all the APIs. For things like, let's say you wanna get the device hub devices and list devices. So things like this will also work. And you click on send command and you get all the list of devices that are on your edge right now. 
for things that require more uh, intricate details, such as device ID for very particular APIs, you would obviously need to edit that in the environment variable, but for the most part, almost everything should work right out of the box. Now the question is how to actually create practical applications from the API portal. So if we navigate to uh, Litmus Edge, we can see that we have like 200 tags and five devices. And uh, some of the information that we require, let's say from a device which has things like water pressure or wind duration or delay or pressure set point or so on and so forth. But we have other devices which are muddying the uh, actual thing that we want, which is like someone, something from Modbus, something from um, CLX device or Compact Logics or something from a simulator that someone is running. So the use case now is how do I actually create an application which um, navigates through all this muddying noise and actually gives me uh, the required information that I need. So what I can do is to fulfill my vision, I go to the API portal, I check device hub and tags, and I see that I have a very particular uh, API over here which says list registers from a single device. So that seems like what I wanna do. I want registers only from the device that I care for. So in this case, it could be a simulator, it could be a Modbus device or whatever, but all I need to do is copy this device ID from here and I can automatically use that over here by replacing this placeholder device ID for with an actual one. Essentially that's what you want to do. Here is the example code uh, that was copied from the API portal. As you can see it is represented in Python and there was a simple function created behind it which is just the uh, query that was obtained from the portal itself. And the small function is to list register from a single device. This will allow us to get rid of all the other devices that we don't really uh, want to see any information about. So my device contains information such as, uh, which are registers uh, such as like wind speed or pressure or something like that. So in this device ID field, I just write the device ID of the one which I'm focusing on. And once I do that, the output will be something like this, where you get a 200 response. And uh, is this the last register that you're observing? Yes or no. And then you will see registers only from this device ID that was particularly copied from the lip message. And as you can see from the tag name, we are watching the wind speed process variable. And this can be something, uh, uh, whatever thing you want. You can observe the topics, you can observe the properties of the device, you can observe the metadata, anything like that. And what this will allow us to do is essentially not use any of the uh, unnecessary information from uh, all the other devices and just focus on the exact ones that we want. One of the biggest requirements is uh, GitOps and automation of your workflow without any disruption. So let's see how Litmus API can help you with that exact task. So here I'm on Litmus Edge, I go to Device Hub. As you can see, I have uh, five devices. And if I click on one of them, you can see the metadata of that device. Uh, we have this uh, set up for all devices over here. And the reason I show you that is if I go to a Python script that I created, uh, you can see I'm connected to Device Hub and uh, Device Management via APIs. I can see all my devices over here and uh, they are matching exactly what we see on Device Hub. And as you can see, if I go into details, you will see the exact meta metadata that is on the Device Hub uh, via the API call as well. And uh, this is the Python script I have created for essentially keep, keep it running and uh, update with Device Hub every 10 seconds or so. So as you can see, any details that you see on each of the device is going to be matched exactly by the Python script because obviously it's just an API call. And let's say we are focusing on a device called Simulator 2 just for sake of simplicity. And I wanna send this Simulator 2 data to a custom vendor where they have their own requirements of the formatting of JSON. So first of all, they require the version of my Litmus Edge, which I am getting from the system 
so device management APIs. This is the software version I was getting. I have um, my URL of FluidMessage as well, and also my MAC address, which is going to be matching exactly. We also have like current timestamp going on, and they require us to, let's say, post the MAC address of FluidMessage as well. So I'm going to be uh, getting that from an API call and posting that as well. As you can see, my script is going to wait for 10 seconds. It's going to connect to the device up again, DM again, and keep on sending this data to the vendor. So what's really cool over here is if I choose to edit and add a metadata, let's just say a newly added key, and um, let's say newly added um, value, just some random metadata, and I'm going to add something else as a key, and then let's say 3.20.12 as another field. And let's just add one more, just another field and another value. We can call it uh, some static, uh, let's say random static string. Yeah, that sounds about right. So what is the purpose of this demo? So the thing we can notice if I update the device, I have still not touched my script, but since it's sleeping for 10 seconds, we'll let it update. So what you'll see is since we are directly connected to APIs, uh, if you monitor this field, the metadata was the old one. But now that uh, DH is connected again, we are looking at each of the devices, checking each of the metadata again. And if you see the simulator, you'll notice something here. The newly added fields were already updated to my script, even though I did not stop the script or anything like that. So it's just if you update on Device Hub, your script is still uh, running as scheduled, but you have updated information over here as well. So this is a really good uh, demonstration of how your workflow is not affected, even though your there might be some changes on the device, essentially. So this uh, works not only for um, Device Hub, uh, if you add a device or if you add a tag or something like that, but it also works for if you have a change in the software version or if you change the uh, device name and actually anything um, that goes along with it. It could be analytics, it could be digital twins. So all components of LE that are behind uh, these APIs, you can design your workflow to keep on running um, instead of uh, just stopping and then uh, reloading the workflow and so on and so forth. So it's supposed to integrate with your environment uh, very smoothly and seamlessly. So conceptually, this is, uh, let's just say you want to provide or obtain enough APIs for your vision. And your vision is, let's say, to create an OE dashboard. And we can assume that you want to create it via standard uh, variables such as availability, performance, and quality. So how would you design your workflow by leveraging the Lipness APIs? Is let's say for availability, you wanna see the status of a tag. And if the, if the tag is uh, has the status of online or offline or okay or not okay, you wanna count, as, count that as availability. So how would you exactly design that? So let's say you go to on the API collection and you want to figure out uh, something on device hub to use as availability. And since you want to monitor a tag, let's go to the tag folder. And uh, we happen to have uh, an API just for this, which is the registered tag status. And here um, you, you will observe over here, like if you mention an array of tags or even a single tag, your example output will show you that status is okay or not okay. So that can ring a bell in your uh, workflow where, oh, if I use this tag as a status, I can use it as an availability for my dashboard. And for performance, you wanna uh, include something else as well. So let's just say you're checking the uh, uh, system for your memory essentially. So you go to info and then you have your memory information, and this could be something any random, like uh, this is how you would see your performance of the device or of your um, Lipus Edge device rather. And um, you can have like storage information, CPU information, whichever parameter you choose for it essentially. 
and uh, something else you use for um, OEE would be your quality. And um, you want to define your quality in your own way. So you can uh, uh, design it however you want. So you can uh, grab it from uh, digital twin model instances, or you can grab it from your marketplace application. And uh, there are multiple ways of getting anything you want. So let's just say your quality is an output of a marketplace container. You can also use logs or container inspect over here as an API call. And you can grab like very, very, very specific thing from a container if required. But if it's not that uh, complicated workflow for, you, workflow for you, you can also just use a device hub as a standard uh, metric for OE dashboards. Before we wrap up, we also want to acknowledge the invaluable feedback received from our Litmus API portal beta users. Their insights have been instrumental in shaping this powerful platform. During beta, we received several questions that we think will help our audience as well. I was commonly asked if there is a prerequisite to using the portal. So the Litmus API portal is intended for developers who would be advanced users of Litmus Edge and Litmus Edge Manager. Someone who has a good understanding of the platforms and now intend to use the data to build custom applications. Will there be any SDKs in the future? Yes, we'll be launching SDKs for the API portal, which would provide an abstraction for the API and make it even easier for the developers. Another uh, common questions for API portals and APIs of Litmus Edge in general was um, how many of them will be supported by Litmus team or what APIs are supported by Litmus team. The answer to that is it's an exhaustive list of APIs that uh, are going to be actively managed by the Litmus team. And any APIs that are not listed on the portal, whether you obtained it via um, uh, back engineering or just by intuition, maybe this would work. So those kind of APIs will no longer be supported by, by Litmus and they might even uh, be deprecated eventually. So for now, um, anything on Litmus API portal is what is going to be supported by Litmus and anything else obtained by uh, guesswork or any other means will not be supported. And But please feel free to raise any support ticket in case you think uh, your workflow is broken because of this uh, this change and if you think that there are some APIs missing that you would rather like to uh, see. We are excited to see the applications that you build using the Litmus API portal. Don't forget to visit the central portal to access the newly available SDKs and explore the Litmus API portal documentation. Thank you for joining us today. We encourage you to reach out if you have any further questions.